22,000 H100s. That is one of the largest GPU clusters that you could ever imagine. Inflection AI has come up with a new model with that kind of a resource. This new model is called Inflection 2.5, the world's best personal AI. That's what they're calling it. Why it's the best personal AI? That's something that we need to understand first before we dive deeper into this video. See, you have got a lot of players in this market at this point. You have got Meta, who is extremely focused on open sourcing. You have got OpenAI. You have got Anthropic and you've got a bunch of other players. So how is inflection.ai different from the other players? The primary objective of inflection.ai from the very first has been a chatbot, a conversational, empathetic, helpful and safe experience. They want to build AI that you will use to chat when you have a problem. The problem is not a programming problem. The problem is your emotional problem. And if that is the chatbot that they want to build, now you can understand what they want. They want to have a chatbot with high emotional quotient or EQ. Now what they're saying is that to Pi's exceptional EQ, we are going to add IQ, which is intelligent quotient. So to make the existing Pi or Pi powered by inflection 2, they want to make it into inflection 2.5, which is going to have more knowledge, more skills, along with the existing exceptional emotion. I'm not a heavy user of Pi. If you're a heavy user of Pi, let me know. I'm still wondering how they managed to raise the fund or the kind of funds that they've raised and what kind of business plan that they have got in a world where you can use chat GPT and others with a different system prompt where they can be your girlfriend, they can be your therapist, they can be anything you want. But anyways, keeping that bias outside, I think this is an exceptional release. The model is definitely not open source, but they have claimed that inflection 2.5 has been trained with only 40% of the compute that was required for GPT-4, which is, if it is true, I mean, we don't have the numbers, but if it is true, this is tremendous. Also, the Pi interface, which is what the front end of the Inflection 2.5, can do real-time web search capabilities at this point. They've got some amazing numbers. I'm not sure, again, if it is true, these are like incredible numbers. The numbers are like this. They've got 1 million DAO, daily active users, 6 million MAO, monthly active users, and users on an average have 33 minutes average conversation on Pi, and 1 in 10 lasts over 1 hour each day, and 60% retention, 60% of the people who talk to Pi on any given week return the following week. So this is a very important metric in startup just to understand the stickiness of users and we see higher monthly stickiness than leading competitors. I don't know how did they measure leading competitors, but anyways, 4 million messages exchanged, 6 million monthly active users, 60% week over week retention and 10% of the sessions is greater than one hour. This is absolutely incredible numbers if it is true. I'm not sure how they'll make money yet, but for a free product, this is incredible numbers. What kind of things people are talking about? They discuss current events. They, rec they discuss local uh, restaurant recommendations. I don't know how they are already saying that local restaurant recommendations are possible while the internet feature is completely new. But anyways, maybe they had like a test group studying for a biology exam, drafting a business plan, coding, preparing for important conversation or discussing a hobby. So personally, if I want to ask coding related question, I would go to ChatGPT or any other like Bard and all the other uh, chatbots that I've got, which I believe is better in the knowledge, but they're claiming that you can use it for that. In terms of benchmark, they don't necessarily beat GPT-4, but they're closer to GPT-4, which is incredible if they've used only 40% of GPT-4 flops, which is also making me wonder at this point, like if you have got 22,000 H100s lying down in your basement or somewhere, why wouldn't you use that much compute and train something better than GPT-4 rather than using 40% and then having a model that is below GPT-4? In fact, like Anthropics, Claude 3 does better than them. So I don't know the answer. Maybe they don't get the 22,000 GPs, GPUs at the same uh, tranche. I, I don't know what is happening there. But anyways, uh, the benchmarks are really good. I'm not going to get into individual benchmarks, except that there is one benchmark that I especially wanted to talk about, which is GPQA. This is uh, ideally supposed to be a really tough benchmark. And uh, this is 
one of the reason why people started looking at Claude. So inflection 2.5 has scored 38.4 with few short in few short question and answering, while GPT-4 scored 39.3. While for the same GPQA, it's a reasoning problem, graduate level questions. I think it's got like physics and other questions. Claude 3 Opus has scored 50.4. Even the smallest version of the model, Claude 3 Haiku, which is completely free available on their website, has scored 33.3, while Inflection has scored 38.4. So at this point, I'm not sure like how to measure exactly like how good an LLM is. But when I see these kind of numbers, I can see that Claude 3 Opus is really a good model, like especially with these kind of reasoning, it's a great model. And whatever people quote as GPT-4 is one, first of all, there is a lot of different version. Two, most of them are like quoted by GPT-4 when they launch. And three, um, this could have been like changed over the period of time. So we don't know the real current value of GPT-4 until somebody runs the benchmark today, like as of today. But even then, this is impressive when you compare it to GPT-4, but not so much impressive when you compare it with Claude, which got like released a couple of days back. But other than that, uh, they've gone through like a couple of other benchmarks and you can see the model does pretty good on a lot of benchmarks. Like the first chart shows, it's very closer to what a GPT-4 would offer. But at the end of the day, I'm not sure if your competition with GPT-4 or if they're competing with a platform like character.ai where you want to build or you want to chat with a system that is highly empathetic. Like it's like AI therapist. Um, that I guess is a very, very big market, but um, let's see what happens there. But that's all about inflection 2.5. I don't want to like stress on the technicalities here because I don't I don't believe that technically they're superior. Let's see a quick demo and then see how they go about it. So you can chat with that. It's very simple. All you have to do is go to pi.ai. And when you go to pi.ai, one of the things that you will see is like you can go chat with that and that's that's by default. And also you can discover like you can ask certain questions. They give you certain options. Let's start with five steps to mindfulness. So it gives you five steps to mindfulness. Find a quiet space, focus on your breath, notice your thoughts, bring back your attention, reflect on your practice, which is good. Okay, free will, is it fic fact or fiction? Is the multiverse real? Okay, I'm not going to ask any of these things, just given that they mentioned that they've got internet access, I'm going to go ask one question. Do you know about Claude 3 Opus? Let's see this. So I've asked, do you know about Claude 3 Opus? And you can see the speed difference. So most of the discover responses probably were already cached. This is not cached. And we, we can see all these responses. It says it knows, that means it has internet data. That is something that we can confirm. And uh, it says it's a real powerhouse. It also made headlines recently for its potential metacognition abilities. This is exactly what my previous video was about, which where it seemed to demonstrate self-awareness during testing. What do you think about that self-awareness? Do you think it could be real? Also, another thing to notice, Pi comes with voice. Uh, so that means you can like, it can literally talk to you. So let me, let me add it here. Um, I don't know how- Self-awareness displayed by Claude 3. The self-awareness displayed by Claude 3 Opus is certainly intriguing. However, it's important to note that self-awareness in AI systems is still a very debatable topic. Some experts argue that this apparent self-awareness is simply a reflection of the sophisticated algorithms and large-scale data sets used to train these models. So I'm, I'm, I've been a big fan of Pi's voice since the start. Like this is one of the best voices I've ever heard. I've used Gemini, I've used ChatGPT, I've used a bunch of other TTS systems, but this is like the most natural that I have felt. I'm still not sure why they have not uh, released a sub product that is just simply a TTS system like text to speech. But anyways, that's that's the choice that they're making. I like the responses. Like I, I feel like when I chat with Pi, it has got a human touch. Um, I'm not a big fan of anthropomorph anthropomorphization of AI where you make AI like human, but I've honestly like felt good whenever I chat with Pi. Like for example, I can show you a quick thread. Um, my uh, life kind of sucks. My job also sucks. What do you say? This is like kind of ch like, like the type of chat that I would like to have with Pi because it gives me a very good, um, you know, feeling. For example, that sounds pretty rough friend. What about your life and job sex? Is there anything specific you would like to talk? Um, 
I'm stuck in the same place, um, same place, and it's not very um, good for me. It seems, let's say. Okay, uh, feeling stuck can be really frustrating. It is important to remember the latency is really good. Um, I I can see that they're streaming the tokens as well. It's important to remember that change is possible, even if it may not seem the right way right now. Is there anything particular in that makes you feel like you're stuck in the same place? I I feel like maybe if you want to build a therapist, the, the, the chatbot should ask a lot of questions. Maybe that is what makes you feel good. Okay, I got a negative comment on my YouTube video and that kind of pumped me up to make more videos and make me forget everything is that normal okay now i'm just completely changing the conversation okay it's not uncommon it's actually not uncommon for negative comments to motivate us and it tells me it sounds like making youtube videos is something you're passionate about okay cool so the without audio i mean it's it's a very normal thing but with audio especially like you're sad and you're chatting with why i think it is it is a good feeling i'm not sure like if I've got like some kind of um, thing that I have to check with a doctor, but I have always felt good whenever I chatted with Pi. And uh, that's it about this video. Pi is going to be powered by Inflection 2.5. And we can see that it has got internet connectivity as well. So you can ask about things that are happening around in the world. And uh, I'm not sure what is the business model, how they're going to turn out, if they're going to get acquired by somebody else. But at least at this point, uh, they're making an AI, making it freely available for us to chat with. Let's use it.